Welcome to episode 104 of the You Be My Aramis podcast. I am your host, Mike Bankhead. I've been suffering through some technical difficulties, so this introduction is a lot shorter than usual, and there's no music, obviously. Today's guest is Sharamon Day, and I think you'll enjoy this conversation. Hey, welcome to my podcast. How about introducing yourself for the listeners first? Let's start with that. Okay. Hi, I am Chairman Destay. Nice to meet you. <laughs> and what amazing things can you do? Do not sell yourself short. I'm going to mention that you skip something that I know that you do. <laughs> um, okay. Well, we were literally just talking about languages before the podcast even started. So I speak multiple languages. Um, I play a wide variety of instruments. And I normally don't even like saying them all because it sounds like I'm bragging, but I promise I'm not. <laughs> um, violin, clarinet, piano, keyboard, xylophone, sax, guitar, bass guitar, electric guitar, and I'm learning drums currently. Um, I currently am a undergraduate senior who will be graduating soon from The Ohio State University. I'm a piano major specializing in classical concerts. So yes, I am that black girl out here playing Beethoven, Rachmaninoff, and and I am not ashamed of it. Um, what else? I don't really know what else to say because I don't like bragging, but <laughs> my cues are something. It's not one, it's not bragging if it's true. And it's also not bragging in, unless you're you're giving people an attitude, which you know you're not doing. <laughs> so I want to talk first of all about your your music background. That's a lot of instruments. Which one was your first? First. Uh, according to my mom, my first would be the keyboard, but I feel like the first is actually the guitar because that was the first thing that I picked up and started playing consistently. And um, my first guitar was acoustic, and then like when I it's like sixteen, I switched to an electric guitar and was kind of like playing around with that for a while. Yeah. How old were you when you first started making music? Ooh. Uh, Wow, that's such a good question. When I first started making music, are we talking about professionally or no? Like before, before you not, were pro. Non professionally, I would say around the age of twelve is when I started. So how I'm curious as to how long after you started learning to play instruments was it before you decided to start writing your own songs? Well, I've actually been writing my songs since I was around the age of 12. I never really got into covers just because, I don't know, it really wasn't my thing. And as I have consistently aged and grown up, I realized that that's probably the better way to go anyway, just because I've learned um, the music industry, being in the industry, and I understand how copyright actually works and how doing covers can actually get you in trouble um, in a lot of different ways. So um, I guess it's fun because you can spin different things and turn it into your own, but I am more of an original being. I prefer to do my own my own work just because I have endless parts um, constantly flying in my head, um, lots of harmonies, lots of melodies. Like literally I can quite... I can have an entire song in my head or more than one song in my head and have each part kind of separated. Like I can hear the bass part, I can hear the guitar part, I can hear three part harmonies, sometimes five part harmonies. Um, and that's kind of always been the way my brain works. So I don't really have the room to like add someone else's brain power into my brain just because I have already enough going on. <laughs> so yeah. That's a very unique way to consume music, not even among other musicians. A lot of us don't cars music out in the pieces like that, which probably has to be very useful when it's time to write and then go to the studio and record. You put out a record last year called Dove Archer, which mm. was among uh, one of my top 10 favorite records of 2022. Oh. I would like you to talk about it. The idea behind the project, where it came from, what you were trying to accomplish, all of that lovely stuff. 
Okay, so I love I love answering this question because Dub Archer is actually a part of a trilogy that I wrote when I was in between the ages of 12 and 14. I already had this planned out. Um, and it, the original, like, it was supposed to be an album, but it turned into an EP because I didn't have enough songs to, like, do a whole album at the time. It was Tremos Unleashed, which is the beginning of my life, which is on Spotify. Um, I don't really like it. I don't recommend it. But, you know, you know, can be proud of all of our work. It's just like the beginning of my life and where I started and how I started, which is very, very dark. Um, it is the unleashing of Chan Monas J, of me, of my sound, because it is very unique and distinct. And it's just the beginning of what will continue to move on. Um, Dove Archer is number two in the trilogy, which is expansion. This is growth. This is like healing. This is a different part of my life. Um, and this is something that's big for me because music is not stagnant, just as people are not stagnant. Our creativity grows with us. And as we grow, our art and our creativity grows. So Dove Archer was actually a one or two year process altogether, like for recording because it kept changing because I kept changing. Um, and it was supposed, it was originally supposed to be about time. Cause I had this crazy idea and I was like, what if I wrote an album um, in encompassing time and util utilizing um, Pandora's box. But it was just like, it was too much fluttering in my head. And I was like, this is turning into like the largest project ever. Um, but none of it really pieced together. And it was kind of falling apart for a minute. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. But it eventually kind of turned into what it is now which is about love and various different forms of love um, because it's not love is all encompassing but there's different kinds there's self-love there is loving others there's like very hard love that you kind of have to give to someone who is in need of that there's sensual love there's sexual love um, and and that's kind of what Dove Archer is 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 nothing but love um, and different forms of that and generally expanding the sound palette and expanding just as a person <clears throat> and I think you can hear that difference in the sound between the two like the not two albums but the EP and Dove Archer which are eclectically entirely different and um, the third one which not going to give any spoilers, but I have been working diligently on recording um, new material and making space for everything that goes on in my head. Um, that is going to be even bigger in sound and brighter in sound. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. So that's awesome. You're obviously going to have to come back and talk to me again when, when the new, when the third piece is out. Um, have you thought about revisiting the songs on on your on the first the first chapter of this trilogy? Uh, now that you're obviously a more experienced, more accomplished in the studio, and and more used to putting your thoughts into a coherent form, have you thought about revisiting the the work on that first part and uh, perhaps retracking it, or do you want it to stay as it is, as kind of like a time capsule? Yeah, I'm a little bit in between because now I feel like I've come into my sound quite well or am coming into my sound from what people will hear. And again, it's very distinct. So I I feel like I've gotten to the point to where anything that I work on is going to have my sound. It's going to have my signature. And of course, like not everything is going to sound the same. It's because you don't want it. You don't want everything to sound the same. But it is gonna have that touch to it that I have now with all of my knowledge that I have gained and all of my experience that I have now that I didn't have when I recorded um Chairman Unleashed. But at the same time, um I kind of like where it's at because it's a closed chapter and that's not where I'm at in my life anymore. I'm much, much, much happier. I have so many things to be grateful for and um, I think where Chairman Unleashed came from was an inner child 
a very broken and scared and angry inner child. And, and that's kind of who wrote that. Dove Archer is um, a growing of age. She is becoming someone new and someone different. She's learning about herself. She's experiencing herself. And moving forward, it's just going to keep getting um, different in sound, but it, but in the same way. I'm not sure how to explain, but just like, growth it's gonna grow um and i i like the cutoff where unleashed is right now especially with dove archer because it's like you can hear the difference you can hear where i was at one point in my life and you can hear where i was at another point in my life and i think that's okay if i did revisit it um it would sound completely different it definitely wouldn't sound the same um it wouldn't be nearly as dark I feel like and I kind of like that um so yeah I'm somewhere in between but I think leaving it where it is right now is is good just because I I feel like um change is good change should be welcome growth is good and growth should be welcome so the more that I grow the more my music's gonna change and it's gonna probably become bigger and more insightful um and allowing people to kind of see where I started and how I started and kind of grow with me in a way I think I think that's good what's the elevator pitch for your sound currently currently I literally just say that I am primarily an a fusion artist I call myself a fusion artist but I combine rock, pop, funk, soul, jazz, R&B, and classical. And that's seven genres all together. But just for simple and short, fusion. <laughs> that, is, that is definitely simpler and shorter. So now I want to talk about your outrageous piano chops. <laughs> because I've seen a video of you playing. And yeah, you're a, an officially educated piano major person. <laughs> how, how did you choose that instrument of all the instruments that, that you could have picked to become really proficient in why why was piano the choice i it's just one of those things that i gravitated towards to like ev everyone has something that they gravitate to whether it's in the art field or it's a certain specific kind of dance and in music everyone has that instrument that they gravitate to first before any other instrument and that was the piano for me it's just it's so beautiful and it can do things that no other instrument can do with that instrument i mean every instrument can provide support to a listener like it can sound like some i've heard like phenomenal musicians like make a, a violin sound like it's crying um i've heard <laughs> people play the guitar and it sounds like it's weeping like these these are the things that i love because instruments aren't just instruments they are extensions of a person's soul and however you're feeling that's how an instrument is going to sound but it, there's something about a piano that just brings out mm, everything it transcends almost all emotions that you feel and it goes into something else that is almost unattainable and unexplainable and i love that i love that beyond what i can describe but it is my baby and it's my number one instrument yeah you mentioned it briefly but in the world of high level piano there are not a lot of people that look like us yeah. How do you navigate the challenge of, of of being in that world? And obviously, since there's not a lot of people that look like us, you're going to get treated differently than than other people. How do you navigate around around those challenges? These are such good questions. Wow. Um, and I've been waiting to answer this question for somebody for a very long time because it's difficult. Like my freshman year was the freshman year any freshman could possibly have. <laughs> I um battled with such severe impossible uh, like impossible syndrome or like i'm not sure what it's called but i um thought about like dropping out my freshman year just because i was like this is strange and i had a little bit of a culture shock because and it's weird i shouldn't have had that because i have family that 
looks different than me. Like my family is very, very much assorted. We have family all over the place. Like I have cousins from Europe. I have cousins from Spain. I have cousins in Haiti. Um, so like, it's not like I should have been that weirded out by it but it's different because when you're used to being like my high school one of my high schools because I hopped around was primarily um black students and then uh, other high schools that I went to and even my middle school was very eclectic like you saw everyone from every culture there and so going from that environment to being in college and being the only black person in in your classroom that is kind of jarring and it's very very uncomfortable I felt uh kind of scared and unsafe in a lot of instances just because like I don't know anybody here I don't know any of these people um and especially in my department which is a very small department compared to like the symphony or like even the flautists have more things going on than piano majors but that's a sidebar It it was strange because freshman, sophomore, um, junior year is when like other people kind of like rolled in. They start accepting new people into the BA program. But freshman and and sophomore year, I I was pretty much alone. And whenever we had piano meetings, not like faculty meetings, but we had piano department meetings um, for all of us to join. Predominantly, it's all Asian students. um, And who are significantly better than I am could play ever in my life, probably who like took years. Um, like I, I battled and I still battle and and I'm trying to like get better at with doubting my abilities just because a lot of my peers, they did competitions when they were like five years old, they won trophies and they won awards. There's a person who has actually entered into the Chopin Institute competition in Europe. And that's like, crazy amount of money there's people who have entered into other like lease form competitions and Rachmaninoff competitions which are the hardest you could possibly enter into they've had years of experience and I didn't have any of that I didn't have enough money to get tuning lessons I needed so I was self-taught for a lot of things um I didn't have the luxury of like entering into a competition because I wasn't prepared. I didn't have any of that experience. So, and before I got accepted into OSU, I only had one year of training and that was at Stiver School for the Arts in Dayton, Ohio. Literally the best school I've ever went to. And it's unfortunate how it's kind of going downhill with their arts department, but I'm glad that I can say that I was one of the few that got to experience it. And I had a teacher that, pushed me to the brink um, and like forced me to kind of like get a grip on myself because she was just like you're extremely talented you shouldn't really be doubting yourself the way you are like don't compare yourself to others and I, I have trouble with that but the thing is is that a lot of the students that I came in with were graduate students <laughs> so they have had more life experience than me and they were able to to do more than me but even like people who I came in with who were also undergraduates have like like took five years started when they were like two years old playing piano um and I didn't have that so it's been a challenge it's been a battle one that I kind of constantly fight and that I've been constantly fighting since being accepted to OSU because it's predominantly white but it's not a battle that I'm gonna just allow myself to give up on and kind of like succumb to it because I know what I'm doing is very, very unique. And I love what I do. So regardless of like racial shit or whatever, I'm still going to do it. But I will say it is difficult. And sometimes I did feel like I was treated a little bit differently or look strange, like have like strange looks from students who are like, oh, you're black. Like, what do you do? And when I told people that, yes, I'm a piano major and I'm studying classical concert, and they're like, oh, wow, that's really cool. I've never like heard of it. Like I've actually gotten this slur. It's like, I never heard of like a girl that like they're trying to be so polite about it without saying like a black girl doing classical. But it, it was very, very clearly there. And they were like teetering around the topic. So I have had that happen on more than one occasion. Um, but all I can say is, you know, it's whatever it's really whatever 
I did not know all of that backstory when I asked you to come play on my record. <laughs> and we talked about it in the car on the way to the studio. And that's when I discovered that you were a piano major. And then I thought that I made a perfect choice for, for a young, talented person to be on the record because really the kind of things that I'm talking about in those songs about Black experiences, you share them. And you have no doubt some stories that are even probably a little more frustrating uh, and, and because of the space that you're in for your, I, see, I guess, your profession now or eventually. And I remember why I reached out to you. And this is going to be a shout out to Kay Carter, fellow Dayton. Uh, he's a Dayton guy. He's a rapper. Yeah. He did a show in Columbus and he posted pictures on social media and I was looking for a black violinist for the project and you played that bill and I did not know you, but I reached out to Kevin Carter and I said, Hey, there's a picture of this, of this violinist. Uh, who might that be? I think I'd like to reach out to her. And he gave me your social media handle and I reached out and thank you for not thinking I was a creepy, crazy person because I know there's a <laughs> lot of those out there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I want to know what made you decide to participate uh, on on my EP I Am Experience. What 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 is what convinced you that this would be uh, something that you could you could be a part of? Well, several reasons. One of the reasons is because I liked what you were doing. I like that you were consciously talking about things that aren't talked about, um, and that you wanted to provide a space for all of these things to be talked about. And I was like, yes, I I like this. I like artists who use their art for change and to do things that incite questions um instead of like because you know there's a lot of art out there and not all of it is good but some of it has meaning and i only focus on things that have meaning or that have some form of value which i think the project does have and the second reason and which goes along with that doubt <laughs> playing again is that I wanted to push myself because I'm like, I, I'm not sure if this is my genre or not. I don't know how my sound is gonna go very well with this person or if it'll mix or not. Um, I don't know <laughs> like what he wants. And I also don't know if I'm capable, like there's plenty of other like extraordinary violinists out there that he could have chose and he picked me and I was like wow that's really cool um but I was just like I can do this like I am learning and have learned that I'm actually far overly qualified for a lot of things um than most people are but I tend to kind of shut doors out on myself and that has caused so many issues. So I'm just like, I think when you asked me it was about the time that I just had this realization that I was just like, I need to go. I need to stop doing this. Like I like had to have like a full kick in the ass conversation with myself. I was like, sis, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> like this is not the move. So I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna take on this project and I'm gonna do it regardless of if it's hard or if it's difficult or whatever the fuck. Like I am going to do this and I'm going to make sure that it's a good job and that I can say that I'm proud of it because I didn't want to do something that was obviously too challenging but just challenging enough and I didn't want to do something that was too easy either I'm not really the type of person who likes to take the easy way out of things um, I do like to challenge myself but I get very deterred just because I'm like there's so many other people out there like who are better than me um but I was like, no, I can do this. And after I, we got done recording with that whole session and like we met everyone, it, it was just like right feeling, right place, right time, right people type situation. Um, and I'm glad that I can say that I helped create something that I hopefully you like and that you're happy with. But also, I'm proud of because I did that. So <laughs> it, it, your work was outstanding. I was really blown away. Like, I knew you could play violin. I was blown away by your creativity and coming up with ideas that really helped push the songs to a different place. Uh, for the listeners, dear listeners, because not only do I wish you to get to know Sheremanis because he's awesome, I also want you to buy my record. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I want you to buy my record. 
but my original idea was to have you play violin on the Americana song because I'm, I'm trying to write songs in different genres and I know, all right, Americana, fiddle is a thing that they do. And your part on that is awesome, but you also contributed some vocal harmonies, a part that I wasn't even hearing, but you found it and it makes this, it just takes the song to a better place. Uh, you're on the gospel song uh, vocally. And there, dear listener, there's a secret song that you can't get unless you actually buy the CD that Sharamondis is on, both with violins and vocals. And the part that she came up with is awesome. So if you want to hear that one, you're you're gonna have to you're gonna have to buy it on on CD to hear it to hear it. But she's on three songs on the record, and it just made me want to work with you again, which is why I asked you to sing on the Neil Soul record that I'm writing. And and you said yes, so I can't I can't wait to. And it'll be a while before I'm ready to go to the studio, but I'm looking forward to spending more studio time with you because you're pretty great. Yes, and that's so exciting. And actually, like, since we worked together and since, like, I'm stepping into my badassness, which I now know that I have, um, I have worked with, uh, like, a handful of other people. And I feel like I have more... I'm just like growing more experience. I'm learning how to work with other people as well. So I'm I'm very, very excited. Like I can't wait. <laughs> and, and really, I mean, obviously I'm jealous of your chops, but I'm just thinking of the potential that you have as many instruments as you play and as many different genres as you're familiar with. Really, the sky's the limit for you as far as who you want to work with someday. And just... As you know, a lot of people in that classical world can't jump down and make pop music or rock music or anything that doesn't require them reading off the sheet, right? And yeah. It's you're a rare creature in that you can you can do both, and that's really cool. And yeah, it makes you a true a true creative. Thank you. So, other than the third part of the trilogy, what do you, what do you, what's going on next for you artistically? So, um, this is actually going to be like a special suite because not many people know about this I've kind of like hinted at it I've spoken about it very briefly at other events that I've done but I'm very very excited about it um recent life for me has been trying to be very chill because as you know I was playing like a ridiculous amount of shows for a while and I didn't have the time to create like it, it just got to the point where I had five songs in my head um, every part was mapped out and it was just like, it was so cluttered that I couldn't have a conversation with a person without like drifting off. <laughs> and it looked like, like I wasn't paying attention, but I'm like, I swear I am. I totally am paying attention, but there's like a lot of music happening in my head right now. So I have just been trying to take my time to not only finish like <laughs> my last course for, um, college, but also, I've been wanting to like record, and that's what I've been doing is like nonstop recording. The next album, which I do have the name, is going to be called Phoenix J. And I'm very excited with the way that it's already turning out. I'm, how did I explain this? I like it being maximum spoilers. Um, I would say, in terms of sound, this is significantly bigger than dub archer the sound is no longer focused on like funk or r&b necessarily but this is truly um a step into like who i am as a musician and who i am as a person as a human being and i'm very excited because i wanted this new music i wrote this new music with the intention to inspire when Dev Archer came out, I just had the intention of like gaining traction. And that's exactly what I did in more ways than one, which is weird. Like it kind of did much better than I was expecting it to. But now that I have those eyes and now that I have those traction and that my name is kind of like floating around Columbus, I want to take this opportunity to use my platform for what I know that I was meant to do which is inspire people and it's taking so long I actually wanted to release it this year but it's taking so long just because I again I'm experiencing so much more than I kind of thought that I would and so things are changing but I will say that once this comes out uh, I don't know where it's gonna go I don't know 
how it's going to be involved in people's lives. But I will say that I'm very, very excited. And I hope that I can inspire at least one person with what I'm trying to do. So <laughs> I'm sure that you will. Now is the time of the conversation when I ask you the questions that I ask every guest. But you will have unique and different stories because you are unique and different. What was the first song you can remember hearing in your life? And go back as far as you can remember. Gosh, as far as I can remember would probably be um, a song that my mom and my Nana would sing in the church because they were in the church choir. And um, there are two songs, actually. One of them was called Love is Bubbling Over and one um, Total Praise, I think is, is what it's called. But the harmonies in, in uh, I, the harmonies in Total Praise are, <laughs> I mean, godlike to <laughs> no pun intended. Like they're they're so beautiful, and I think those are the two songs that two songs that I remember hearing. But which one I heard first, I don't know. Do you still remember the music and the lyrics to those songs? I yeah, actually, I not too long ago I, I took a trip back to memory lane and I listened to Total Praise and because I was ha I, I mean I'm not really a churchy person. We ended up like leaving the church just because it became not what we wanted. But there are things about it that were good, and I think Total Praise is one of the things that I keep close. And every now and then I listen to it. But as far as Love is bubbling over. I don't really remember. I don't remember anything about that song other than the chorus. And that's only because Nana would sing it to me as a kid. <laughs> and then that's it. Here is a question that might possibly be related. What did your childhood smell like? <laughs> smell like? Smell like. Um, okay. Spaghetti, and not just any spaghetti, but like baked double cheese spaghetti that you would cook like in an oven. Lots of baby powder and baby oil. Um, and uh, uh, <laughs> nobody's probably going to know what this is, but jion jion, which is a very, it's a Haitian rice that is used for like aka black rice there you go um i think that's a good term for people to know um but the spices are very distinct and and i think those are like three distinct smells that <laughs> my childhood would consist of is that particular food possibly yellow in color possibly yellow i mean it's it's like normal white rice but the spices that are used there's um like a cube um that is used to turn it black and there's other things that are in there like shrimp and rice like and like peas um and like sometimes beef and pork is used it just depends on what kind of tuna you want but yeah there is like what's the what's the like bouillon like chicken bouillon cube mm -hmm. yeah that's it's used in there so it, like it starts off a little bit yellow and then it turns black how do you write it because i'm going to google it when we're done so i can learn more about it D J O N, but twice <laughs> okay so the reason that i thought it might be yellow is because uh jean is the french word for yellow and i thought that you know a lot of times in haitian creole they take a french word and it changes right as time goes on so mm. that was that was a guess but obviously it was not quite a right guess. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe that was the correct guess, but um, that's definitely like, yeah. Oh, and flatbread. Yeah, flatbread. But like home-cooked flatbread that is made and uh, roasted over the stove. Yeah, this is 
this is a good smell. <laughs> well, that's, that sounds awesome. Do you, have you learned how to make any of those things now that you're, you know, grown? Oh, yes. Uh, don't, don't know. But I do know how to make flatbread, like actual homemade flatbread. And it's so good. Like if you want it to be like the pull apart bread or layered bread, it takes a little bit longer, but it's totally worth it. It's delicious. Yeah, that sounds pretty awesome. I like that question because, uh, you know, smelling something can take you back and put you in a specific place, right? It's, it's interesting. I don't think I've ever been like asked that question before. Yeah, I stole it from another podcast, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good one. So I want to talk now, we're going to change gears about your songwriting process because you write songs. Mm -hmm. And you have a lot of tools at your disposal when it comes time to write songs. So when you're going to write, What's the first tool that you reach for? Oh, gosh. The first tool that I reach for is actually my tablet because I record everything on my tablet. Um, well, tools, plural, is my headphones and my tablet because I record everything on GarageBand. <laughs> yep. How do your songs start out? How does... How does... How did the song go from in here to out there? Listeners cannot see the gestures I just made, so I probably shouldn't have described it that way. Uh, how did the song go from existing only in your brain to existing elsewhere? Well, my process is very scattered, but usually the thing that stays consistent around every song that I make is the bass. Bass is the thing that I hear first before anything else before any like harmonies go or before the lyrics bass is the first thing that is usually what i hear just because the bass is the heart of the song as um, it should be yeah yes a lot of times it's like the soul of the song so like without the bass usually it's like you know so i usually hear that first and then other things kind of like trickle in sometimes i hear like the keys after the bass or like usually it's the drums that'll pop in um and then like synth and if i want to use that or like special effects or even transition effects those don't come until after like that's usually the last thing that i hear but sometimes like how the process changes is that sometimes I'll hear the lyrics in my head or I could just be, I could literally be anywhere. I could be like out about at the store. I could be washing dishes. I could be vacuuming the floor. And um, it's weird. It's like the way I explain it <laughs> is I picture a little musician in my head and he plays things for me. And really all I do is just put them down. So it, it has nothing to do with me. <laughs> it's just like, I have a symphony of things in my head and I was putting them down. And usually he gives me pieces of things and, and, and sometimes it's like the full thing, but sometimes it's like the lyrics first that'll have those together. Or sometimes it's the harmonies and the voices that I hear first. Um, sometimes it's just like the drum beat and the, the bass that I hear first. And I only hear that only. The only consistent thing is the bass, but usually the process is pretty scattered with what I hear. Yeah. It sounds like most of the time you have the music done before you have lyrics. Is, is that correct? Yeah. A lot of the times, like lyrics is pretty much the last thing that I add just because I want the music to be there first. And lyrics change. Lyrics can change very easily. Like, at, like something that is very important to me is harmony. Harmony within not just the music, but very specific harmony. Harmony in between the voices of the vocals. Harmony in between the instrumentals and like how they are singing around each other, how they are interacting with each other. And sometimes if you have the lyrics first, that won't always have harmony with the instrumentals. Just because like you could be thinking, I want this song to be like this, but it doesn't sound like that. Um, and other times, like I'll have the music completely done and I have no lyrics at all just because I'm like, well, I thought I wanted it to be about this topic, but it doesn't really sound like that topic. So but, so usually like the music is generally done, but the lyrics often change just to befit how I'm seeing and hearing and feeling the harmonies within the music. And then I usually add them on. 
How do you know when the song's done? When I can't add anymore. That That's like a big thing. I feel like a lot of musicians have trouble kind of sitting with the music. Like I know a couple artists who like, they'll literally get done. As soon as they're done tracking the last scene, they're like, okay, it's done. I can't do that. I kind of envy that almost because I have to sit with something before I say that it's done. Like even if it sounds completely done, there's nothing to add or whatever. I still sit with that piece for at least like a week or so. And then come back to it because you know, like as musicians, we get tired of our own music because we're the ones making it. We have to stop and record and play and like fast forward, like all of the song, you know, we're listening to the same things repeated over and over again. And after a certain time, it's like your ears (laughs) get too accustomed to it. So something can sound good one day. And then you like, say, okay, this is done, pick it up, and it sounds like garbage. I've had that happen before. (laughs) So I need to sit with it. And if I've sat with it for long enough and I still feel the same way is when I completed the recording as when I took enough time and I can legitimately say and feel that there's nothing else to add to this right now, doesn't need any other parts, it doesn't need any other lyrics, then I'm like, okay, this is finished. I have put enough of my energy into this, I can move on now. So with that in mind, when's the last time you sat down and listened to Dove Archer? Oof. Maybe like two months ago. Did you still like it? Yes, I did. Nice. And it was crazy because like there were a couple of songs in there that I was like, oh man, you know, I could have added this. That's happened too, where it's like, even if it's done in that moment after sitting with it for so long, you can come back to it and like later on, you'd be like, I could have added this. But there, there's a cutoff point because I say like sit with it the same way that a person has to sit with themselves if they're feeling some type of way. If you're like, mind is too scattered, you have to sit and be quiet and like let that kind of wait for a second. That doesn't mean for music, that doesn't mean that like sit on it for like three years, five years, because then you're not releasing anything. And you like, you can be a musician without releasing anything, but it just depends on your goals. It depends on what you want. If you want to like be out there, you have to put music out there. If you want to just make music as a hobby, then that's fine too. But you have to know when to cut it off and when to stop because otherwise you're just going to be like continuously sitting on a hay mine of music, right? So, but sometimes, and like in the case of Dove Archer, at the time that I finished it, I was fully like, this is done. Like, I can't add anything more right now. Um, and then time progressed. I grew. I learned new sounds. I learned how to like utilize more things that I have. And then when I actually went back to Dove Archer, I was like, wow, that would have been really cool if I if I added that. Or like, oh, I could hear another harmony in the vocal part that I just didn't add. And that's okay because now I have that exact knowledge that will like keep going for Phoenix J and like even after Phoenix J. So, yeah. So where can I send the listeners to find you in order to listen to your music and get to know you better? You can go to my Spotify, which is up, Dove Archer is up, and um, Tremors Unleash is up. If you want to actually see me performing and in action, you go to my YouTube page. Or if you just want to get to know me, you can go to my Instagram page. Excellent. And I will link to all of these in the show notes. I'll also link to Dove Archer over on Bandcamp because that way people can give you money for Dove Archer as opposed to just <laughs> listening to it for free all the time. You know, if they if they choose. <laughs> uh, any any last messages before the listener for the listener before I let you get on with your Tuesday? No last messages, I don't think. But I will say that I had fun. This is a very fun podcast, and I'm glad that I got to spend a little a bit of time with you because I feel like we haven't actually like talked since we recorded the project. It's been a while. <laughs> so it's it's been a very long time and a lot has happened since since then. So you know keep working, keep grinding and I can't wait to work on this Neo Soul project. So. <laughs> I will I will try. And and for you, congratulations on uh your we didn't have this part recorded, but you're almost going to graduate from Ohio State, and uh, that's an accomplishment. Not all of us yes. get a chance to go to college and come out with a degree. I didn't. 
So that's a really cool thing that you you can say for the rest of your life and no one can take that away from you. And you're super talented. And look, hey, musicians in Ohio, you heard, go back to the beginning if you don't remember how many instruments Sarah Mondes plays. She plays a lot of them and she can sing and she knows how to write. She would be an asset to any project if you want her to come track with you. So keep that in mind, Ohio musicians. Doesn't matter what your genre is. I'm sure she can handle it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks again for taking the time out of your out of your busy life to chat with me. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. This was fun.